What's going on teachers and parents and welcome to Math Unlocked where I get to offer you strategies for teaching math for grades 3, 4, and 5. My name is Miss McCarthy. I'm the creator of McCarthyMathAcademy.com and I'm on a mission to make math fun, make it click, and make it stick for you so that you can support the students that you work with. In this episode, we are going to focus on a third grade skill today and that will be involving multiplication strategies. So let's not waste any more time. Let's get to it and let me teach ya. All right, y'all. So the whole purpose of today is to break down two things. One, what is multiplication? And two, some strategies that you can use to solve multiplication problems, okay? Now, multiplication in third grade is huge. It is really, really vital that third graders leave third grade and jump into fourth grade knowing what multiplication is and practicing strategies to become fluent with it. So towards the beginning of third grade, when a student sees four times seven, we expect them to perform these strategies that I'm about to show you right now. Towards the end of third grade, they should be mastering these facts where they then know when they see four times seven equals 28 because they have a strategy to get there. Okay, let's just let me stop rambling and let me just get to it. Okay. So we have four times seven here. This is a factor and we're multiplying a factor times another factor, okay? So factor times factor will then equal the answer to a multiplication problem, which is called the product, okay? The product is the total amount. So now that we know that factor times factor equals the product. So let's move into groups of equal things. The box that says groups of equal things, that's right here. And what we're going to do is take our four times seven, which will then turn into four groups of seven things in each. I shorten that by writing tie things in each four groups of seven things in each. So let's create four groups. One, two, three, four. Okay. And now we're going to place seven in each. And this is how I suggest doing this to kind of keep it nice and organized. It's to use tally marks. Okay. So it would be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 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 It helps to keep it organized. Otherwise, students, sometimes it starts to look like this and it's all over the place and maybe they make an extra little dot and they consider it to be and then the total will get all wrong. So we don't want to do that. Teaching your students to keep it nice and organized um, by counting groups of five and then moving on. That makes it nice and simple for us to go and count the total because here we can count by fives. Five, 10, 15, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. So four times seven or four groups of seven things in each will give us a product of 28. Drawing groups of equal things is one strategy when you are multiplying to arrive at the correct product. Another way, moving on to the next box, would be using arrays, arrays. So let's write our expression again, four times seven. For arrays, our first factor is the number of rows going down, and our second factor is the number going across, okay? So watch as I do this. We're going to have one, two, three, four rows going down, and then we already have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, already have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, already have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, already have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Groovy. Now notice that I said already have one. That's because sometimes students, they put those four rows going down and then they'll place an extra seven in each. And that gives you a totally different expression. That gives you four times eight, not four times seven. So a strategy that I've been using over the years is to say already have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all that. Now what we can do is count them up. 
Okay, so we know that we have seven in this first row. Then we could say, so seven in that first row. Then we could say eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 21. Notice I'm stopping to track the amount as I count it up. It's also starting to build my understanding over here of skip counting by sevens, okay, which is going to come in handy the more and more that you practice this. They start to recognize the patterns in them. So now I've been talking and telling you about this strategy of stopping to track, and I know exactly where to start, okay, which would be 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. Same product. Okay, so four times seven equals a product of 28. I'm gonna go ahead and put 28 up here just so I lock that in. So we've learned about groups of equal things. We've learned about arrays. Let's connect it to repeated addition, okay? So four times seven. All right, so repeated addition, we have four times seven, and you might be going, repeated addition? I thought we were doing multiplication. Well, the cool thing is, is that addition and multiplication are connected. Multiplication is actually just repeatedly adding the same thing over and over again. Okay, so what we're going to do is add seven four times. So that would be seven plus seven plus seven plus seven. There we go, adding seven four times. Now, if I were to break that down, I could say that seven and seven is 14. This seven and seven is 14. And if I add 14 and 14, what does that equal? 28. Okay, a couple different ways that you could take a journey to add those four sevens. That's the one I like to take, grouping them together to make it nice and simple. So four times seven equals 28. That is repeated addition. Moving on to the number line strategy. All right, so a number line, let's draw it. Okay, I'm gonna start right here at zero. And just like what we're doing up in the, um, really in all of them, we were taking seven and then adding seven and then adding seven and then adding seven, like here, seven, 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 and seven. And then over here, seven, 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 and seven, and then repeatedly adding them. So right now for the number line, four times seven, we're making four jumps of seven this time. Okay, so here's jump number one. That That's a big jump, let me, let me, let me zoom this in actually so you can see. Number one, we would be adding seven. That would be landing us at seven, so this would be jump one. Jump two, if we add another seven, that would be 14, right? That's jump two. Jump three, you could also go like 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Okay, jump three. And then finally, the fourth jump, let me extend my number line just a little bit, would be 28. That's the fourth jump right there. So that is how you model four times seven on a number line. Moving on to the strategy of skip counting when you are multiplying. Okay, four times seven means we're going to count by sevens four times. Okay, skip counting. So we need one, two, three, four. We're gonna be counting by sevens. Like when we're counting by ones, it would be one, two, three, four, five, like that. Counting by twos, two, four, six, eight, ten. Counting by fives, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, all that. As we've been practicing that over the years, and now we're skip counting by other numbers. This is where the multiplication mashup song that I've created will really come in handy, which is what I'm going to go over. I'll be dropping an episode next week going over this. Um, so you can look for that going over like just the multiplication mashup. So I'm just going to quickly go over it here because I'll take a deeper dive um, in, a, in just a little bit with it with another video. So the, let me write that down. Multiplication mashup. Multiplication mash up. If you can't wait, just go to YouTube. You can type in multiplication mashup. You'll find it. There's also a link in the description somewhere around this video with the link to the multiplication mashup. So what I would do is count by sevens four times. So I'm using the seven song 
to multiply by seven. We've already been skip counting though. We have it right here, right? We have seven, 14, 21, 28. We have it right here, 7, 14, 21, 28. And if you listen to the seven song on the multiplication mashup, it goes like 7, 14, 21, 28. 7, 14, 20, 128, 35, 42, 49, if I were to keep going. This is a great song to help students lock in, to get them from this, what we're doing right here, which is really breaking down what is multiplication, what are my strategies to help me get there. And now I understand what multiplication is, but I want to be able to get to the point where I can just spit it out quickly, where 4 times 7 is 28. That will take them from drawing out four groups of equal things to 7, 14, 21, 28. In a matter of seconds, they can arrive at the correct product with skip counting using the multiplication mashup. I'm going way too much in depth with that because I want to save it for the next video. But there you go, sneak peek. Okay, a bonus. Let me think of a bonus strategy that we could use here. I'm going to give you two bonuses here and I'm going to zoom in, okay? So let's write this up here, four times seven and four times seven. All right, once we start getting familiar with multiplication, we can start to use a really helpful strategy that is a property of multiplication. It's called the distributive property of multiplication and that is where we break one factor down. Yo, that's distributive. What does that look like? Let's take a factor and break it down. So for this one, I'm actually gonna take the four and break it down into two and two, okay? A two, when you have a factor of two, you can use the double strategy. So if you have a factor of four, you can use the double, double strategy. This is essentially saying, hey, I know that two times seven equals 14. And if that's the double strategy, seven and seven is 14. So the double, double strategy would be to say, all right, now let me double that, which would be 14 and that is 28. So again, we're breaking that factor four into two and two. Let me break, show you. Breaking that factor four into two and two, and then we're saying two times seven plus two times seven, or 14 and 14 is 28. That's called the double, double strategy. And that works when you have a factor of four. For instance, if we had, um, let's say four times three, well, I know that two times three, that three doubled would be six, double that, six and six is 12. So four times three equals 12. You can use that double, double strategy. Let's move on to another strategy. I'm still going to use the um, distributive property of multiplication, but this time I want to break down the other factor, seven, into factors that I know. I've been counting by fives and I've been counting by twos for a long time now, right? As a third grader, I can count by fives, five, 10, 15, 20. I can count by twos, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, all of that. So if I can break down seven into an easier factor of five and two, then I can solve it. So here we're saying, okay, we're multiplying four times five, that first one that we broke down, and we have four times two, the second factor right there, we got five and two. So we had four times seven, and now we're saying, let's solve four times five, let's solve four times two, and then we'll arrive at the same product. So now four times five, let me count by fives, that would be five, 10, 15, 20. Cool. Oh, and I forgot to put that I'm adding those two together. All right, now I know how to count by twos, that would be two, four, six, eight. Add those together and we get 28. Okay, woo, there are uh, nearly seven, one, two, three, yep, nearly seven different strategies that you could use to solve this problem. Now you might be going, whoa, dude, this is definitely going to overwhelm my third graders. 
It will. <laughs> yes, if you present all of this information to them in one lesson, it will definitely overwhelm them. That's why we as third grade teachers, we like to break it down, right? Maybe one day we're focusing on groups of equal things and maybe connecting that to repeated addition. Then the next day, hey, we did groups of equal things. Now let's break it down using arrays. Connect that to repeated addition. And you've hit three strategies in two days. Then you can say, all right, now let's model this, what it looks like on a number line. And eventually, you know, over time, once they have the hang of that, you introduce the distributive property of multiplication. But then what's really cool is once you have gone over all of the different ways to solve a problem like this, the really cool thing to do is to say, all right, students, um, we have, let's find the product of four times nine. How many different ways can we figure that out? And it's really cool for them to start bringing in a bunch of different strategies that they are familiar with. Really, really cool. And it really builds that number sense foundation that we, that they desperately need. So make sure that you're helping them there. Um, again, in a future episode, I will go over the multiplication mashup strategy more in depth of how you can use that throughout. And I think that's good. So I hope that this was helpful for you. If you're looking for more support with this strategy right now, and you can't possibly wait for another video to drop, definitely stay tuned because I'm about to break down some next steps that you can take to get access to tons of video lessons for third grade skills. In fact, let me break that down for you right now. I hope you found this episode to be helpful. If you did, please let me know by hitting the like button. And if you want to see more, consider subscribing to the channel. It's an easy way to support the content that I bring to you for free on YouTube. If you're a teacher or a parent, especially in Florida, you'll definitely want to check out McCarthyMathAcademy.com. Here is where I offer fast math freebies, including a playlist of fast math style problems and video lessons to support your teaching. For those ready to dive deeper, check out Taken on the Best, a monthly membership packed with video lessons, student guides, extra practice, error analysis videos, math tasks, mini assessments, and much more, which are all strategically aligned to Florida's best standards. With three levels, bronze, silver, and gold, you can choose the support that best fits your needs to promote student growth and skill mastery. Would you like to take taking on the best for a test drive? You can sample one standard per grade to find the right plan for you. Do that by simply requesting a free trial. And if you're gearing up for the final fast math assessment of the school year, Definitely check out Taking on the Fast, a 15-day countdown series with video lessons and fast-style math problems. Start with a sneak peek of day one, and when you're ready, you can make a one-time purchase. And if you're thinking about the gold plan for Taking on the Best, good news, Taking on the Fast is included in your membership. While many of my followers are in Florida, I know that there are teachers and parents everywhere looking for support. That's why I created McCarthy Math 155 with 155 video lessons for each grade level, third, fourth, and fifth. You can also sign up for a free trial to McCarthy Math 155 to explore it before signing up for a monthly membership. And finally, if you've enjoyed my math music videos on YouTube, you can also jam out to ad-free versions on my website. You can find all the links below and please feel free to email me with any questions that you have. I can't wait to see you in the next episode. Until then, get out there and make the world a little bit brighter in your own special way. See you next time.